In this video, we're going to go over the basics of calculating personal income tax. This is just a broad high level overview of the considerations, specific details and monetary amounts are gonna change um, according as tax laws change every year. But the basic principle remain the same. The first thing of course that you're gonna to wanna to do is to calculate all of your income. The most common thing that we think of when we do this is your wages. If you work for a company, you get a W-2, it tells you how much money you earned that, that previous year. However, if you work in as a, on, on wait staff or something that receives tips, you also need to report your tips. Um, if you earn any interest on accounts or investments, that also counts as income. If you receive alimony or childcare support, that counts as income. Um, and or if you have any gambling or prize lottery wins, those also need to be included in your income as you move forward. Once you've gotten all of your income calculated, the next thing that we're going to do is calculate something that they call the adjusted gross income. Sometimes you'll hear this called AGI. And what the adjust, adjusted gross income does is it's going to subtract certain special deductions that the government is trying to encourage people to do. So um, any, sometimes you'll hear these called pre-tax deductions. Sometimes you'll hear these called above the line deductions. Basically, the government is saying, if you're spending your money in certain ways, we're going to count, we're going to decrease the amount of, of income that you have to pay taxes on. Uh, the most common thing that gets subtracted here is retirement funds. Let's put this over here. You may hear... Um, the government does want you to contribute to your retirement so that you can support yourself in your old age. Um, it's in their interest. You'll sometimes hear these things called IRAs. That's a um, individual retirement account. If you're working through a company, a lot of times they'll do something called a 401k or a 403b. Those are different types of retirement accounts that can be created. So um, that's going to be one of your biggest things. Um, other things that count as pre-tax, you'll sometimes see HSA or FSA deductions. Uh, HSA stands for health savings account, where you're basically getting to set some money aside pre-tax um, to apply towards future uh, medical expenses. Flex spending account gives you ways to reimburse money that's spent on certain qualifying health expenses as well as child uh, and dependent care. Um, other things that sometimes that will fit in here as well, uh, student loan interest falls into this category. And alimony that's being paid gets subtracted here as well. So it doesn't get double taxed. All right, so as we do this, any of these deductions are going to get subtracted from our income. So to do the calculation, that's gonna be income minus qualifying deductions. And again, that's these, these kind of super special uh, pieces that we get, come from here. Now, there are also, the next piece that we're going to subtract here before we figure out Our income is the difference between standard and itemized deductions. Certain types of things can be itemized in a way that is going to bring down your tax values. Uh, things like mortgage interest, property taxes, state and local taxes, sales taxes, 
basically trying to not get you to pay double tax on these. Uh, large medical expenses can fall into this category. And charitable, charitable contributions. So these are all examples of different types of things that can be itemized and used to bring down your, uh, your income so that you are paying less tax. Now, itemizing these things can be very difficult. For example, if you want to itemize your sales tax, you have to save every single receipt that you did over the years, over the year. And so to make things a little bit easier, there's also a standard deduction that everybody can take. This is going to depend on your filing status. There's four types of filing statuses. Uh, you can file as a single person. You can file married file, filing jointly where you put your taxes together and just submit a single tax form. Uh, you can do married filing separately. Um, or you can file as what we call a head of household. A head of household is going to be someone that's single but that's supporting dependents. Uh, so a single mom, something along, the, or a dad, something along those lines can file as a head of household. These amounts vary every year. And they're um, for 2023, for example, you could, if you were single, you can make a standard deduction of $13,850. If you decide to look at your itemized values and these come out to be more than $13,850, you might want to choose itemized. This is one or the other. You don't get to do both. So if the standard deduction is the bigger amount, then just do that simple one. Or if you decide to break down into itemized and this comes out to be more, maybe you bought a house that year, a variety of different made large contributions, had big medical expenses, you might want to itemize instead. Um, married filing jointly gets a $27,700 deduction because there's two people there. My, my, uh, married filing separately is the single rate because you're filing as a single person. And head of household gets some additional deduction here beyond being single because of their uh, dependent care. So these, as you come to this step, you're going to have to decide, am I going to pay the standard deduction or am I going to pay the itemized deduction? And you want to pick the one that's most in your favor. The next thing that you want to do then is to calculate your taxable income. Your taxable income is going to take be calculated by taking the AGI and subtracting either the um, standard or itemized deduction. Once you know what your taxable income is, this is the one that you finally look at to calculate your taxes. There is a table of taxes that you can use to figure out how much tax you're going to owe. Um, and that table is based on filing status. And we'll do a lot more detail on this step in the next video. But this is how we come up with what that amount of income is. Once we know the amount of income, we can find what the taxes are. Once you've found the taxes, sometimes there are some things that are called tax credits. These are things that are going to apply towards your taxes to decrease the amount of tax owed. You can almost think of this as free money from something to contribute to the taxes. So kind of associated along that line. Uh, the most common one that we see is, is a, a child's tax credit. And currently that's been running about $2,000 per child um, that is under the age of 17. 
can be calculated in here. There are limits and all sorts of other considerations here, but in general, that's a, a pretty common tax credit. Sometimes you'll uh, be able to get tax credits from other type of dependent care. Sometimes you'll uh, see things like energy efficiencies or something like that, um, where the government's trying to encourage you to do something and they'll, they'll give you tax credits. Once you know, once you've applied your tax credits to your tax, you need to come up with the rest of that money. Now, the government doesn't want you to be in a position where you can't pay them. And so businesses are required to set aside money for their workers and employees to pay their taxes when tax time comes due. So the last question that you need to ask yourself is how much was set aside for taxes by your employer? Um, if that is more than you owe, you'll get a refund. But if it's less than you owe, you need to pay the balance when you file your taxes. So this is essentially going to be the steps that we, we will go through each time. Uh, figure out how much income you made, adjust for these special pre-tax considerations here, decide if you're gonna use a standard or itemized deduction and subtract that to get your taxable income. Look your taxable income up on the table to see how much you owe, apply any tax credits um, to decrease that number that you can, and then compare that to money set aside for the taxes that you have to decide how much of a refund you get or how much you have to file from there. Uh, we'll go through some examples of each of these steps and some case studies in the following videos.